AI is not anything new, it's not anything massive, it's not anything magical. Just imagine AI as um how do you put it? let's say let's say you have a computer, right? Usually, or let's say you have a cal calculator. Right? Usually you tell the calculator one plus one, and then the calculator will give you an answer. So you give the calculator and you give the calculator um items or objects, right? And then you give the calculator the instruction of what to do with the object and then to give you an answer. So if you don't add a plus in between the one and the one, a calculator won't do anything with those two numbers, right? Even though you're giving it objects. If you put just plus in there to ask you what numbers am I asking, right? But then AI comes in to come in, should I say, mitigate that, right? So you don't have to tell the machine that, that's, that's where machine learning comes in. You don't have to tell the machine at every point in time that when you see A, B, or C, do exactly this. You want the machine to be able to synchronize that, okay, if A, B, and C are happening, this is probably what should be the next step, right? So what we build is something called suggestive AI. Right? So basically, if you notice, a, if the AI system notices a couple of trends, it will suggest to use certain steps to take to make a system more efficient or to make your, your um, warehouse safer, to make your um, farming process more efficient to handle your smart security and give you those suggestive steps. And as well as that, they have the active AI, which would actually take action while you're not around. So maybe if, um, how do you call it, an alarm is supposed to go off and you're asleep or something, they will take that action for you, call the police. Instead of like you having to wake up to call the police yourself, call the police for you. But so maybe, maybe you're, you're a deep sleeper, right? <laughs> or maybe you are really tired. So yeah, that's, that's how, that's how um, that's what we're trying to do, right? That's the kind of stuff we're trying to produce, provide for African businesses and African individuals. So basically, we have systems that serve you domestically or while you're at home, and we have systems that help reduce the stress at work, right? By making all those mundane tasks easier, you don't need to stress why is my business falling or why is my business failing. We noticed that a lot of startups were failing because they would come in hot. The marketing campaign would get everybody excited. And everybody buy into what they're talking about in the first few quarters. But then later on, because people kind of realize that, oh, I, maybe I don't really need this thing, or times get really hard, people kind of lose interest. And that initial interest is not built on properly. So having that information available helps sustain your business, right? And helps reignite that fire for a business that you felt was dying because the AI gives you suggestions. What if you add this piece? This firm added this piece and it's, it's working for them. What if you add that piece? What if you add that? What if you try this? This is a new piece of tech that's coming out. What if you added that and then make things possible? Maybe I sell buildings and my buildings are not getting that traction. Maybe if I added a metaverse or a virtual reality thing where people could take virtual tours from around the world and see the buildings, maybe they'll, more, they'll be more interested in seeing my buildings because all of a sudden they have that that active feel like, oh my God, okay, this is a building that I can trust actually exists. And this is a space that I can work with. And this person is trying to incorporate tech. So they get more interested. Right? So the AI will give you these kind of suggestions. You connect the dots where you need to connect the dots and yeah, you take action. And that basically helps. That, that's our little part. That's our focus point that we're going to be going into. And then uh, the rest of the parts, we are partnering with a couple of firms to make those other pieces possible, right? Data storage is very important. Cyber security is very important. All those other things. Networking is important, right? So we partner with other people who are also focusing on those parts of the um, chain, right? And at the end of the day, we're all human. Human beings are not limited to one thing. We're problem solvers. We're dynamic, right? So yeah, <laughs> we come together, we bring together what we can do, and nobody needs to work alone. Nobody needs to fight alone. That's very interesting. Uh, that looks like uh, almost very futuristic now, no? <laughs> looking at where we want the, the Africa continent to be, of course. So actually where I want to go from here is how effective is it in Africa at the moment in terms of robotic science and AI? So when it comes to deployability of any solution, right, and even medicine, right, we need to realize that every, every continent and every community of people evolved and grew differently. And they will interact with the solutions that we bring out different. Nobody exists in a bubble, right? Usually people think about solutions, tech solutions, especially, but we usually assume that the user is going to use exactly how we visualize in our head, right? Instead of realizing that how it will be utilized in the Western world and maybe Britain will be different from how it's utilized in Mexico, 
and how it's utilized in Africa and how it's utilized in China. Because people have different experiences and they have different ways of interacting with everything. Even if you take a piece of written literature, how you, the writer, intended for that literature to be interpreted is really how somebody else interprets that. I did a course in school called Text and Meaning with the to exactly that, right? You might write a statement, give a speech, and then have this goal in mind, right? But then the listener, the reader, whoever is interacting with that will probably have a different perspective based on his experiences or his personal um, upbringing. Similarly, when we are trying to bring solutions from the foreign scope into the local scope, you have to look at that transition gap, right? So what, point, what points do I need to fill in to make that transition easier from step A to step B to step C for a local farmer? In the foreign farmland, most people are using greenhouses and those of that thing. So it's a contained unit. You can track all this data very easily. But then over here, a lot of things are open to the element. How do I link or how do I breach that gap? Right. So we took into consideration, and most other tech firms are coming here to consideration, one thing like networking speed and another thing like power availability. Right. So when you take networking speed into a um, into account, right? You realize that networking speed is not as fast as you'd like for it to be. And there's sometimes some interference, right? And power availability, we know that we know the bad PR of lights going out and all those kind of things. So if you're building a system, the, self, the system doesn't have to be too internet dependent and too power dependent, right? Too power dependent. So that's that's how we've adulterated our systems to be able to work over here. And right? so basically um, when we when we design systems, it comes with solar tech because we have abundant sunlight. You know, every time you have a problem, you, Mother Nature gives you another solution or another way to go around solving the problem. Right. So we decided to go with solar tech because we have abundant sunlight. Right? And we decided to go with what we call local area service. So basically instead of the server always having to reach out to the internet or having to reach out to wherever I have to reach out to in a crowd, wherever I am, right? It stays within the loop on whoever's premises we set up the system. If it's a warehouse, it should be independent and for that warehouse, right? If your internet goes off, you still have that. If your lights go off, you still have that because you have your solar battery pack. If anything should happen, we still have that, right? So we augment the, the, um, how do you call it, the solutions. We don't just pick it up, okay, this is working in the West, bam, in Africa, straight up. No, you have to take a look at the scenarios over here, the problems over here, the advantages over here. We have a resource advantage in Africa, for example. We have a sunlight advantage in Africa, for example. A lot of pioneering tech hasn't been tested here. So you take all those, those constraints into consideration, and then you find a way to adjust your solution. Right? So that's what we did personally. Um, around something, I don't get around something like uh, the, should I say, the low um, risk taking appetite in Ghana, right? The fact that selling a smart solution to individuals might take a long time. We decided to partner with firms that could give us economy of scale. So, for example, for the smart housing solutions, we partnered with a couple of real estate firms, um, Green Park, Mizumi, all those firms, right? That way, when you're automating the building, you automate this with the realtor. 1,000 buildings, 6,000 buildings, 10,000 buildings, all at once. Instead of worrying about selling it to 10,000 people every time, right? Because then you'd have to convince 10,000 people that buying a smart home security system is better than getting a dog, for example. Right? Can you explain, so yeah, that's the that, way. That, can you explain it. shortly what you mean by security a house in a way that at least a layman can understand it? It's a security building or oh, smart okay. building, as it were. Okay, so basically, um, I think most people have interacted with stuff like Amazon, Google Home, or those Google Home, Amazon, um, Alexa, those kind of setups, right? So basically, a smart a smart home security is meant to find um, exactly points of entry, right? So if I have a house, right, which point of entry can somebody enter if they want to come and steal from me? We know that um, burglary numbers in Africa, for example, last last year was about um, 40, 46,000 cases right, in, um, in Ghana, right? So we know that, okay, there's going to be probably a burglary and um, if you feel like there's probably going to be a burglary, right? And the burglar can use the front door, the back door, the windows, and all those kind of things. We put in sensors, right? So the sensors are the IoT devices that pick up information, right? So basically 
did they pick up whether somebody has actually broken into the building or something, right? Once that trigger is picked up, instead of just a regular alarm that people usually rely on for the alarm to scare the criminals away. I mean, people can just ignore alarm these days and then just go and turn it off, right? So instead of the regular alarm that just triggers and scares people off, we try to get the police and the emergency people, based on the user's discretion, notified instantly, right? So basically that creates a case where um that creates a case where if, instead of the situation where um how do you call it you have to call the police after the criminals have already left and now the police have to figure out how to find that person which is usually difficult after the person has already left because um how do you call it finding dna and cross-checking dna it's not as easy as it is in foreign places um cross-checking visual recognition stuff is not as easy as it is in foreign places so then how do you stop criminals, right? By stopping them when they are there, instead of like waiting for the person to leave the place. So we're trying to bridge that gap, right? By having the police notified the moment the crime is taking place, instead of after the crime is taking place, now the police has to come and do damage control. And plus it's better to prevent the problem from happening than to try and solve assets that's already taking place, right? So yeah, we, we're trying to, um, that's, that's the system that we have for smart home security, for example. The AI system that runs that is called Ivy, right? Um, we have one for, um, how do you call it, warehouses. So people who store goods, people who have um, shops and all the kind of things can set that up in their building just to protect their goods and their wares, right? And then, yeah, all the other um, setups come in as well. Thank you so much for that.